Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a while, but that's okay because we're about to catch up right now. Remember, this is a non-judgment zone, okay? So y'all gonna see some cleaning supplies and maybe a little light bulb over here. Your girl's in the middle of moving. And yeah, things have been very chaotic, okay? I mean, things in my life are always a little bit chaotic, but I mean, yeah, I just feel like... <laughs> I feel like it's been a tough week so we're gonna go ahead and talk about it because y'all my people and um somebody said my life is kind of like a reality show in all honesty it probably is but yeah we're gonna go ahead and talk so let's go i have not felt like doing my makeup at all because like when i tell y'all this has been a everyday process with this move it's been an everyday process but my friend was like girl we got to go out to lunch because she know I didn't have a rough ass week. So that's what we're doing. We're going to kind of go out to lunch and kind of catch up a little bit. This right here is the e.l.f. pencil. I don't normally use this pencil, but like I cannot figure out what the hell I did with my NYX espresso pencil. So this is just going to have to work for now. Okay. Um, if you guys aren't aware I'm in the process of moving because my neighbors, my management company is out of fucking control, right? So we got this house. I'm going from an apartment to a house, but I decided I had the great damn idea that um, I didn't want to wait to the last minute to find a home. So we wind up having to pay rent here for October and November and then also rent at the new place for October and November. It's okay, it's okay, you know, like that's not the part that's really getting me down. I don't know where half of my stuff is because, yeah, it's been packed away. Like the only thing I really have not packed up in its entirety is my room. And uh, once again, I already had a really bright idea to get brand new furniture. So um, I decided to get brand new furniture. So at the new home, it's all being delivered there and when i tell y'all that i've made so many trips over there now mind you the place that i'm moving to is an hour away from where i currently live so the trips have been very fucking chaotic i also had the bright idea instead of going through like rooms to go or nebraska furniture because i feel like they furniture be overpriced and they didn't have what i liked you know like i feel like it's very um old school like who wants a leather couch i don't want a leather damn couch so i decided to not go with them probably was not the best idea because i decided like oh my goodness let me order through amazon all right so i order through amazon and furniture is showing up every day because of course amazon can't just deliver everything on one day so the process has been amazon has decided to deliver everything one day one day one day so i may be over there saturday they deliver one item then i gotta go back sunday then i gotta go back monday so it's just been a whole debacle mind you gas is like 320 here in texas and um i live the new house is an hour away so it's just been frustrating you know um but I had to go over there. I wasn't really bothered in the beginning because I'm like, you know, you decided to order off Amazon, different vendors. So, you know, you can't really be too upset about it. Like, you're just going to have to deal with it, right? So, I'm like, okay, cool. You're just going to deal with it. It'll be fine. So, I told y'all in the last video um, that I'm moving to an area that has a lot of black people, right? Um, and so... The post office, you know, it's a small town. So the post office saw that these huge items are being delivered and refused to deliver them. Now, why Amazon chose to ship my shit USPS? Um, and we're talking about like beds, mattresses. Um, we're talking about like bed frames. Why you didn't ship that FedEx or UPS? I will never know. I'm assuming that you were trying to save money. But anyway, the post office refused to freaking deliver it, unbeknownst to me. Now, again, because I am going to be moving to a home, I have to get a mailbox key. Unfortunately, they got to come out there, you know, do the locks all over and then give me my key. That's going to take 10 days. So I got notified by Amazon that my two, no, my four mattresses, because my kids, they wanted bunk beds. So my four mattresses that I ordered 
were not going to be delivered. So in my mind, I'm thinking that the post office you know, try to deliver it and I was not home because again, my primary residence is my apartment right now in this moment because I don't have any furniture over there, right? So this is my primary residence. So I'm like, okay, maybe they tried to deliver. I wasn't home. Let me, you know, go up there, get the little, you know, the sticker, the little pink sticker they put on your door, let you know, hey, we tried to deliver it and you weren't home. We'll try again or whatever, right? Ciao. Ciao. It's been going downhill ever since. I'm gonna use this right here, which is the Rebel Honey Palette because yeah, it's just around. It's just around, it's no purpose. I'm just using it because it's here, okay? And I honestly, I don't think this is like my favorite palette, but you know, who cares? I'm just going out too much. It's not that big of a deal. This video is really just to give y'all an update on my life. I am learning that you guys are really interested in my life. I'm not really sure why, because I don't do too much, but I'm learning. So maybe, maybe, I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll take y'all through the vlog with this. I, I don't know, okay? So don't hold me to it. Anyway, back to the post office, right? So I get over there to the house and I'm like, there's nothing on my door. Okay, normally they leave it on your door. When I'm in an apartment, they left it on my door, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I can't access my mailbox because, again, I don't have a key. So let me go up here to the post office, right? When I um, purchased the home, they said that you had to go up to the post office with your lease and show them that you're a homeowner or whatever, and they'll give you the key. So I'm like, okay, bet. So I go up here. I'm like, hey, here's my lease. First of all, they charged me $25 to make a key. How the hell you charge me $25 to make the fucking key? Why you ain't charged the previous residents change locks? But whatever, okay? We're going to go ahead and, you know, just don't worry about it, right? So they charged me the $25 to make the key. I paid it. Then she going to say, this, this, this is where I heard it, but, like, I still wasn't even upset about it, right? So she's like, oh, yeah, the boxes are back here in the back. We didn't even attempt to, to pick those up. What do you mean you didn't attempt to pick them up? A little bit of a deep brown and then just kind of, you know, deepen up my corners because y'all know that's my thing or whatever. So I'm like, what you mean you didn't attempt to pick them up? She's like, oh, no, we saw them come in and was like, oh, no, that's too heavy for us. We're not lifting them. Ma'am, I pay for delivery. Like, what are you talking about? But it, again, I'm not even upset. I'm not even tripping. So I'm like, okay, well, can I just go ahead and pick them up? Because, again, the mattresses, like, I could easily, like, just let down the seats in my truck. And we can just go ahead and slide them up in there. So I'm thinking you're going to have somebody come out and help me. Girl, no. No, she did not. She literally put them in like that little basket tub that they be having and wheeled them out to me and was like, um, you could just leave a basket right here like when you come back. So I'm like, okay. So I'm outside struggling. Like when I say I'm struggling to pick up these mattresses, I am struggling. Like, girl, what the hell? I paid for delivery for this very reason because I knew, I knew I was not going to be able to do it. I'm going to take a little bit of my white elf concealer and um, use this to cut my crease. So, I'm like, um, okay, you know, I go ahead and put this stuff in my car. So, I'm like, well, what's going on with the other stuff? Because, mind you, Amazon didn't ship like six, seven items via USPS, right? So, I'm like, oh, what's going to happen with the other items? Like, are y'all going to attempt to deliver them? This lady going to say, and she was nice. So I'm not even going to be like too hard on her. But she's going to say, um, you know, yeah, we'll try to go ahead and deliver them. But, you know, what I can do for you, again, trying to get out of fucking picking this shit up. She's like, what I can do is I can um, tell, like, put a note or something that she had me fill out where she could hold all my mail up there and I could just pick it up. So I'm like, no, nah, that's not going to work because, again, I have heavy stuff coming in and I'm not going to be able to put that in my car. So that means that I don't have to rent a u-haul in order to come up here and get it right and if it's coming up here on separate days that means i'll have to have the rental for multiple days like that's just not going to be convenient for me right and besides i pay for damn delivery so y'all should be delivering my shit okay now i'm gonna go in with like a little bit of orange at this same juvia's place palette this palette right here i'm gonna use some of this orange right there um so i'm like no that's not gonna work she's like okay so we'll just keep on trying to deliver i'm like okay bet you know and then now that i know that y'all are not going to deliver it if i'm not home what i'll do is i'll just make sure that i'm over here so that means i'm taking my laptop everything so i can work from over there right now mind you i don't have a wi-fi over there jesus that's a whole nother debacle okay trying to get wi-fi on at two spots at&t ain't doing what they supposed to do so i'm like okay i'll just work from over there 
so I'm sitting over there because they say the delivery is supposed to happen Sunday right so those were two mattresses I picked up I picked up two mattresses from UPS USPS sorry so then the other two were supposed to be arriving the next day so I'm like okay so I'll just sit over there you know that's perfect you know I'll just go over there clean up do what I gotta do because again I gotta prep the house anyway before I actually move in before y'all move into these places y'all should definitely be cleaning because although something may look clean um to the eye like I promise you it's not but anyway I'm sitting over there and when I told y'all I got over there because I got the notification at like nine o'clock that this stuff was gonna be delivered by 9 p.m. so I was like okay well, you know I'll just go over there and chill so I get over there probably like around 10 and we just sitting there, we just sitting there all day, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, I know the post office, like they not going to try to be here all late. You know what I'm saying? Like, so whatever. Again, I'm not upset because I already know, hey, this was your choice to go through Amazon to get this stuff. So it's going to take a little bit. All right, I'm using like a little bit of the orange or not orange. Like this is like a maroon color. There we go. It's a maroon color. Using like the little bit of maroon color that's in there. The one we initially started out with putting on our crease and I'm just going to blend in those colors. I probably should add like a little bit of white to the inner corner. I don't know. But anyway, I was sitting there all day. Nothing happens, right? So my ex came over because he was going to start installing my daughter's bookshelf. So he came over and he's like, I just seen the mail lady, right? So I'm like, okay, nobody ever knocked on my door. And he hands me like the little slip from my door that says that she attempted to deliver no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I have been sitting here the whole time. Nobody knocked on the door. Nobody rang the doorbell. So I'm like, okay. So he's like, well, I talked to her and she said that the boxes are really damaged and we have to come up there and pick it up. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So we go up there to get the stuff. She pulls out the fucking boxes and it's nothing wrong with the boxes. Like the boxes are fully intact. So I'm like, you just told him the boxes were damaged so you didn't have to deliver it. Just say you didn't want to lift that heavy ass shit. So, again, I'm still not I'm still not tripping. I'm like, you know, at least we got the mattresses. We cool, right? So, the bunk beds are supposed to be delivered Monday. My bed was supposed to be delivered Sunday. My king size mattress was supposed to be delivered Sunday. And the actual frame was supposed to be delivered Friday, next Friday. But nothing right so sunday my king size mattress never arrived once again i think it's at usps so they gonna make me try to go up there and get it so i'm like you know what whatever but i'm still not fucking tripping right i'm still calm listen i think this is all i got in me y'all i'm so damn tired i don't feel like doing nothing anyway so monday night they say that the bunk beds are supposed to be delivered right the actual bunk beds so i'm like okay cool so I'm like, I'm going to just drive back over there, you know, but this time I done learned my lesson. I'm like, I'm not going over there and just sitting there all damn day, right? Because now I know which time y'all deliver. Like for my apartment, UPS don't come over here until like nine o'clock. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just wait. Now they did say it was being shit with FedEx. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I get over there probably like around seven ish, right? And we chilling, we get us some food, we, we calm, we cool, we collect it. So nine o'clock rolls around no delivery i lied i'm gonna add like just a little bit of white to the inner corners a little bit <clears throat> just to kind of make them pop out just a smidge not a lot but just a smidge um anyway so i'm just sitting there i'm sitting there i'm sitting there and nothing so something just tells me to go look outside so i look outside and i see the fedex truck sitting there so i'm like what the fuck is going on so this man is sitting there on his damn phone, like not on his phone to like a supervisor, nothing like that. The man is just sitting there chilling on his phone. I guess he needs like a little bit of break. So I walk up to the window and I'm like, hey, do you have a package for me? And he's like, oh, yeah, I got one for you. So he uh, pulls the bunk beds in and I'm looking at the boxes. And as I'm looking at the boxes, I'm noticing because I ordered a gray one and a white one. And they were supposed to be twins over fools. And they have the ability to, you can just like take the twin off the top and then they become two separate beds. Which is why I got them because I know eventually my kids is going to be teenagers. We can take the fool, replace the bed frame. Boom, you see I'm thinking ahead, right? So I'm trying to get all my money for my investment. So he's like, yeah, I got them. So he brings them in the house. As I'm looking at the boxes that are coming in, I noticed that one of the boxes says um, twin over full with tundra and hopefully i'm pronouncing that right probably not because y'all know i'm pronouncing it 
but I'm like, that's not what I ordered. I ordered a twin over full with two storage drawers because I knew they was going to need storage and I didn't want no fucking tundra. I just didn't want it. So I'm like, okay, you know, maybe that's just like a little typo or whatever. So then he keeps bringing the boxes in and as he's bringing in the boxes, I'm still reading them. And I'm like, again, I ordered one gray, one white. So I see three white boxes and only one gray box. So they come in like um, two boxes for each bed, right? So I'm like, what? So as I'm looking at it, I'm like, I think they done sent me the wrong shit. All right, I'm using a little bit of my NARS. This is um, the primer. Um, I don't know. I think it's the soft matte primer. Yeah, soft matte primer. Um, anyway, I'm like, I think they done sent me the wrong shit, right? So I'm like, damn. But again, I'm like, all right, you got to relax, you know, don't be tripping, you know, maybe it is the right set. They just put it in the wrong box. So as I'm looking at it further, I see that they put the SKU number for the gray on that white box that said Tundra, right? So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe it just came in this box or whatever, but it's actually gray. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So I called my ex. I told him I need him to come over and install the beds, like start setting them up. So he comes over, we get the beds together, and then we start to unbox them. The first half of it was actually correct. Thank God I did my son's room first, right? Because had I not, we'd have still been sitting there today, and the shit wouldn't have been installed, and we never knew. So I began to open up the box. The first box is great, right? So we like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then we go to open up the second box. Why the hell is the second box white? So I'm like, no, 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 this can't be. I'm using a little bit of my NARS. Y'all know this is in the shade Nambia. Y'all know I don't know how to pronounce this. And it's just, I'm just not going to know how to pronounce it, whatever. So I'm like, okay, this can't be right. I opened up my daughter's and I was like, maybe my daughter, you know, has the gray set, whatever. Maybe they just got it mixed up. Child, no, both of hers are damn white. So I'm like, what the fuck? Now I've had enough because I'm like, listen. Y'all have had me over, over here every single day since Friday trying to pick up packages. Y'all haven't delivered the packages that you said you was going to damn deliver. And then now you ship me the wrong shit. So now I'm fucking pissed off. So I called Amazon and they're like, well, your king size mattress should be there tomorrow. I said, you said it was going to be there Sunday. Then you said it was going to be there Monday. And you expect for me to like really hold on to the hope that it's going to be here on Tuesday. Like, girl, stop fucking playing with me. That post office has it. And they want me to come up there and get it. And it's no point in me paying for fucking delivery if I had to keep coming up there and getting shit. Now, mind you, for the twin beds alone, I pay like $300 in delivery, right? To have the shit sent to my home. So, I'm already fucking pissed, right? Say, so first time, shame on me. First time, no. No, first time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Okay? The third time, I'm punching your eye. I don't think that's how it go, but that's how it's going to go today. Okay, this is the concealer from NARS that I'm using. Y'all know this is my shit. Love it. Um, so yeah, I call Amazon. I'm pissed. I'm like, you know what? Like, y'all keep playing with me. Da -de -da -da. I said, I don't even want the goddamn king size mattress in the bed because I already know y'all gonna have me be the one to come up there and pick it up, which kind of defeats the purpose of me ordering um i mean yeah using shipping or whatever so they issue a refund immediately thank you amazon issue that goddamn refund because i'm tired of y'all so now i am in the process of trying to find a new mattress and bed and honestly y'all honestly if i'm being quite honest right now i honestly think that i am just going to either buy off of wayfair or um one of these little furniture shops around here but you know your girl was just trying to save money especially since i have to furnish the whole entire house like girl at one time you're tripping but i told y'all in the last video i'm really just trying to get rid of all of my heartbreak and heartache that i've had in this house like i just don't want to go through that no more so we'll see what happens but um as of now the seller as far as like the twin bunk bed goes they did um what they do <laughs> they did freaking um send out a replacement the replacement should be here child i'm so damn over this house like i just want to be moved completely moved and be done with it because this is becoming a damn chore like it's just a lot
Okay, then I'm going to use a little bit of my Beauty Bakery um, setting powder. To just go in here and just set under my eyes. Oh, that was too much. Child, that was too much. I'm going to lift up my eye because I want all of this to be set all up in there. You know, just all of that. Um, anyway, that's that, right? Then, further into the Neighbors Chronicles. They just keep getting better and better, child. She, um... She had my ex's car tow while he was over here. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that because I feel like I probably would have did that shit to her. But it's okay. You know, it's all right. And the reason why I know it was her because, bro, they do not even tow over here. Like, they really don't tow. They've been telling us for the last two, three years they're going to tow. And they never tow. And the car is outside. There is a broken down vehicle outside, right? And the little lease thing that they sent out, they said that if your car is broken down, then we're going to tow that as well, right? If it's been here more than like a week or something like that. There's been a car sitting outside that's been here for like five, six months. They didn't tow that, but just so magically they towed his vehicle. I know what you did, girl. And that's okay. It's okay. I'm going to give you your props on that one. Like I said, that's you played chess on that. You played chess on that. You caught me slipping. I'm on your ass, though. Just know that. Okay, I'm going to go in. I'm going to contour with my one size from Patrick Star. And just get all up in here, right? Then the other thing, like, I don't even know if I should share this with y'all. Because some of y'all be super damn judgmental. So I'm not really sure if I should share it. But, you know. I ain't got no problem blocking folks. So, um, recently, probably just like a day or two ago, I just um, got word that my daughter is autistic. And um, I don't know how to feel about it. Like, I, I don't. I think I'm still kind of processing it. Um, but it, it, I don't know. Like, I really don't. I don't know how to feel. Like, I knew that something was going on like she's always been just a little bit different than her brother and other children so I knew which is why I pushed so hard for her to be tested because I knew that there was just something different about my child and what's crazy and I was talking to a lot of my friends about it is that I don't know if it's just black people i'm not really sure i can't really speak on everybody's experience but i know that it was very difficult advocating for my child this has been um two years in the making of me asking for assistance because like i said two years ago was probably when i noticed it and i think i have a video of me even stating that in like um an old video like i knew something was just like a little bit off nothing you know bad it's nothing She's a kid, you know, she's still a kid, but I just knew that there was something different about her. And I had been pushing between therapists, between the school, and everybody just kept brushing it off. Even my friends, like, and that would piss me the fuck off because my friends would be like, well, well she's just an average nine-year-old. This is nine-year-old behavior. And I'm like, no, there's something else going on. But nobody, nobody seems to to want to listen and believe me so I'm happy that we're taking a step in the right direction but a part of me is like I've been telling y'all this for two years we could have started whatever it was two years ago of course she's in therapy but I'm like we could have started you know her whatever making it better two two years ago you know we've lost so much time and so much progress because y'all didn't want to listen all right I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier and just um bake a little bit but yeah, I feel like I did like a lot of crying out and asking for help. And I'm I'm thankful that I didn't stop. Like I knew it was something going on and I didn't just take, you know, the first five people's word for it. Because it's been a lot, y'all. Like we've been to a lot of different therapists and, and everything. So I'm happy that I didn't just take their word for it and continue to push for her. Um, because I knew as her mom, like I, I just knew. But it, it was very frustrating. And I'm like, I see why things with children or with people in general can sometimes get a little out of hand because people don't listen like they really it I'm telling you I had people close to me I had therapists I had psychiatrists I had everybody telling me the school telling me oh well, she's just a normal kid you know just normal behavior and I'm telling y'all like it's something more than that and ain't nobody listening like that is so frustrating when 
you know it's something going on and you trying to tell people and people looking at you like you fucking crazy. I'll just put on some Amazon lashes and call it a day. But um, this is why like I'm not saying that I advocate against people having kids because that's not what I do. But I am a firm believer that people should think before they have children. I don't feel like you should just be out here having kids willy nilly because it is very difficult to be a, a parent like not just to be a mom or a dad but to be a fucking parent has it's it's been really difficult and it's really hard on me I think one of the things that like really hurt my feelings um with my daughter is I was reading through her paperwork um for where from where she was uh diagnosed and um one of the things that she mentioned to the person who ran the test for her was that I guess when they asked her like you know how how was your mom's emotions she said my mom is emotionless and that hurt my feelings because I'm like why would you think that I'm emotionless but I tried to be like really understanding to that and like really reflect on my life because I think at times maybe I am a little bit emotionless and it's not because I want to be but I think that if I really sat down and processed everything that has happened in my life or that is continuing to happen I would be broken and I don't want my kids to see me that way I just don't so I was like I felt bad that you feel like I'm emotionless I hope that you know that I love you and that that I would die a thousand times over for you but I'm not sure that I'm at a place where I can, it, it, because it's just me. Um, if we have family, then it may be different. But because it's just me, I can't, I can't break, right? Because you only have me. So if I'm broken, then who will you depend on? But it hurt my feelings because I'm like, I got emotions. And maybe I just don't deal with them. But I definitely do have emotions. For me, a part of being a parent is making sure that I give my kids everything I didn't have. Um, or that I felt like was needed you know um, perfect example would be I remember my mother instead of paying our rent you know she went out and bought a ferret <laughs> you know so here we are facing eviction and you bought a damn ferret my mother is bipolar um, and so I just I try to make sure I do things differently. I'll try to make sure that the bills are always paid and and I, I try to make sure that you guys have never experienced having the lights off, you know, um, because I know what that felt like. I remember being at home and I have a food in the house and I remember my mom always being out at the club, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, then when she finally did try to get it together, it was like, hell, I'm halfway grown now. It's too late. And so I try to make sure I'm home, you know, like I there's never been a time I wasn't able to pick y'all up or that I didn't do what y'all asked me to do. And it's like, I don't always feel appreciated. And the prime example would be, I made sure to buy a home that had um, rooms that were the same size because I know how my kids are, but I wanted to make sure they had a good backyard and a good neighborhood. And, you know, there were so many things that I factored in to make sure that they were good versus me just going to find a home that, I felt like was going to be within budget and this is just what it's going to be. You know, I always try to make sure I keep them at the forefront and sometimes I don't feel appreciated. Perfect example would be with this house, right? Um, I remember crying the first time I showed them the home because immediately when we put up in the neighborhood, it was just like, oh, this is it. And I'm like, yeah, this is it, you know? So we get in the house and I'm thinking, you know, maybe they're not impressed with the outside, but let's go ahead and get in the house. And we get in the house and they're like, mm, it's just OK. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's just OK. It, it was more so like they were disappointed in me for getting them this. And I'm like, coming from your apartment, you don't have you don't have the things that you're going to have at this house. You don't even have a backyard. You can't go out and play in the front yard. And it, it just really, it hurt my feelings. That's why I say if you're going to have kids, you got to be prepared for to be hurt. Because ain't nobody going to hurt your, your feelings like your kids, especially when you're doing everything for them. My son wanted a projector. So guess what? I made sure that there was a projector in that home, in his room. My daughter wanted a bookshelf. I made sure I got her a bookshelf. They both wanted bunk beds. They refused to get any type of other bed. I made sure that I got it. You know, and although they are more expensive and I got to put more money out. If that's what you want, then that's what you're going to get, right? And then for you to just walk into the home and be like, the room is small. Like, just, it was just, it was very hurtful, man. It it was so hurtful. And I'm, I'm like, 
I'm still trying to process it, but I cried. I really did cry because I've I've done everything. You know how much money I put into to buying this home, and kids can, can kids can really be unappreciative. And in talking with my ex, he's like, "What you have to understand is that the only two references they have, because again, we don't have family, right? Um, I have a couple friends that I fuck with, but most of them don't own houses. A couple of them do." The only two references that they really think of when they think of a home is my boss's home. We've been there and that's like a damn mansion. And then my friend's home who just bought a home at the beginning of uh, January. So their homes are gorgeous homes. You know, they got two stories, you know, they got pools and shit. So when they when they come into their home, of course, if you only have those two things to to reference, then your home is going to seem a little bit mediocre. But I'm like, let me tell you something. My friend is married, okay? Her husband pays her bills. And my boss is, shit, that nigga making a whole bunch of money, okay? I'm, I'm not in that position, but I am giving you the things that I felt like we didn't have. You know, I didn't have a backyard growing up, you know? And I'm, I'm we didn't stay in the best neighborhoods, but I'm trying to give you everything that I didn't have, and it still ain't enough for you. And it's like, that, that can, whew. That, that shit is hurtful, especially when you're doing everything, you making sacrifices, and it just ain't enough. Girl, you ain't never had your feelings hurt until you had kids. I'm like tearing up just thinking about shit. And you know what's like really hurtful too, is that you still got to take care of them. Even after they disrespect you, and they flip out, and they tell you that what you're doing is not good. Although it is the best that you have to give, it still ain't good enough for them. Um, You still got to take care of them. You know what I'm saying? You still got to love them. Because, you know, a stranger did that shit to me. Don't worry about it. You ain't never got to talk again. But not with your kids. Like, you still got to be there for them. It's it's a lot raising kids, especially on your own, man. And that's why I really don't understand when people have kids back to back. It's like, are you not raising them? Because this is a lot, girl. This is a lot. My kids hurt my feelings daily, you know? And when I talk to my friends about it, it's like, well, that's just what kids do. I remember being appreciative for the shit that I had, though, like because we didn't have much. And I think the fact that my kids are so spoiled that they don't really understand what it means not to have much. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I wouldn't want them to go through the same shit I went through because I feel like a reason why my daughter may say that I'm emotionless is because of the, sh the shit that I've been through and I've I, had to learn how to have a guard up and how to deal with that shit internally although i'm fucked up you know so i wouldn't want them to go through that this is why i give them everything that i give them but it's it's hard as hell to continue to give it to you you don't appreciate it it's hard okay i went and put some curls in my hair i don't know where my actual brush is to blend out my setting powder so we just gonna do what we can do with this and please do not take me saying like don't have kids ever i'm not saying that i what i am saying is that you need to heal before you have children okay because it is definitely not a journey for the week okay it is just okay let's get bronzy for the one time for the one time i'm gonna use a little bit of the mocha mommy this is super red y'all um i like to use it just to kind of warm up my skin a little bit i don't know if i'm actually using it as bronzer i don't think that i am I think I use it more as like a blush but it does warm up my skin and just I don't know bring some color back into my face because sometimes it don't be a lot of color you know once you do all the powder and sitting and stuff so you'll need that if you guys have made it here make sure you guys subscribe but only if you want to be here I don't know what the hell is going on but within like the last probably two weeks uh, people have been commenting that they don't enjoy the way that I talk, but they've watched several videos. Like, make it make sense. If you don't want to be here, don't be here, okay? Don't force yourself to be here because guess what? This type of talking is never going to change because we're a real community over here. And it just is what it is. And you're not invited. Members only. Okay, I cannot find my MAC Chestnut. I probably will use MAC Chestnut first, but I cannot find it nowhere because... Yeah, we're in a process of moving and I probably just tossed everything, y'all. That's why y'all clean my own carpets. Yeah, I clean my own carpets. It's been amazing. Anyway, this is, um, I believe, from Mamsie Beauty. Make sure I ain't got nothing on my lips. 
I believe it's Mamsie Beauty and it's in the shade brown. I love a good brown liner. Y'all know this. Okay, let's go in with our lipstick. This is the Nubian Sand from Juvia's Place. Okay, once we got the lips together, y'all know I'm going to go ahead and top that off with my NYX Fortune Cookie. Definitely one of my favorites. I'm never going to change it. It just... It just gets the job done. I don't know. Probably need another one. I felt like I bought another one. But I probably ain't gonna be able to find it until I move. So. Alright guys. So here we are. This is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I know that you guys are used to me being a lot more consistent. And I promise I'm gonna be a lot more consistent. Just allow me to move first. Okay? No. Actually, I am probably gonna upload a video next week. Because I am going to trap karaoke this weekend. So, mm, mm. Mm. I'm so excited. I've never been, but I've seen the videos. My friend went last year. I was a little broke last year, so I didn't get to go. But this year, for sure, I'm definitely going to go. Um, so I'm super excited to do that. And I'll make sure that I try to do a look on that so you guys can see. Because I've seen them little leather pants at uh, Walmart, them pleather pants. And I think think I'm going to go and get them. I don't know. The TikTok girlies are saying they hidden, but I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Um, but yeah, I just want to let you guys know about this wig as well. This is the same wig. Y'all know I ain't got money to be switching out wigs like that. And I really don't be on the wig review type of thing. Y'all do too much. Um, but anyway, this, I actually laid this one down with the bowl hole. So normally I use the Evan that's in like the black bottle even Evan whatever it's called I use that one and that one's good and the only reason why I use it is because I like to take my wigs off every night and with the boho active you don't really get that chance because she is stuck stuck okay but I did it this way because I knew I was going to be going to trap karaoke this weekend and I wanted to make sure that my hair was laid and I didn't have to redo the install like I just don't have time for it or whatever because I know that Saturday is going to be a tough day but anyway I'm done talking because I'm I'm just rambling at this point but I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time